Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe, touch, and like, click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'll also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please check the link in the description or click the join button below for more details. My name is Saba, and today we're investigating a crucial technique in categorical variable analysis and hypothesis testing in general, which is a precursor to many econometric concepts, which is ANOVA, or analysis of variance. And today we're going to investigate the simplest one-way ANOVA, or as it's alternatively called, the Levine's F-test. Levine's F-test is a quite simple technique that can be used to see whether the variable of interest, and here we have got weights of 200 pumpkins, is homogeneous or heterogeneous across the values of a particular categorical variable. Here we have got two categorical variables of interest, which is pumpkin variety. We have got four pumpkin varieties, squash, gold, casper, and giant, and three types of fertilizers that can be used to grow pumpkins, which are nitrogen, potassium and phosphate fertilizers. And we might want to know whether the weight of pumpkins depends on what variety they are. Are some pumpkin varieties generating larger crops? And also across fertilizers used. Does it make sense to use a particular fertilizer to grow your pumpkins? Obviously this data set is quite simplistic and um, a little bit tongue-in-cheek, However, this can be generalized to many much more serious financial and economic data sets. Here we stick with pumpkins just for the sake of simplicity so that everybody can understand what this test is about. Here we need to know how much does the weight of pumpkins vary both generally across the total sample, so just calculate a simple squared sum, squared deviation from average, weight of pumpkins, how variable this variable is, no pun intended. And then we need to also check how the pumpkin weight varies between groups, which uh, are generated based on the values of our categorical variables of interest. And I will show you two methods. One is very simple, but less efficient. And the second one involves constructing some quite nice and uh, illustrative tables and simplifies the calculations quite a bit with the use of array functions in Excel. So first of all, for the uh, simpler and more direct method, we can simply calculate the average and uh, track it across our sample. So we just calculate the average weight of all our pumpkins. Here we just select the whole sample and lock the cells. And we can see that the average weight of a pumpkin in our sample is around 10 kilos, 9 kilos and 760 grams to be precise. And that means that the total variability as per the formula here is the squared sum of the deviations between the weight of individual pumpkin and the total average. We could have used the sum as q function here, however, this is simply more general and uh, shows what's going on uh, a little bit more directly. And now, if we care about the variability of pumpkin weight across varieties, so does the variety of a pumpkin uh, matter for its average weight, we can calculate the averages specific to a particular variety. So here, we can use the average if function, uh, refer to the range of the categorical variable we care about. So for example, the column C records the varieties in our case, and then refer to the cell that records the variety of this particular pumpkin. And the average range would be the range of pumpkin weights. So the first pumpkin is of the giant variety, and we can see that the average weight across this variety is 14.5 kilos, so quite a bit higher than the overall sample average, and we can enforce it throughout. So for example, the pumpkins of gold variety on average weigh 8.7 kilos. The squash variety is even lighter, 7.67 kilos. 
And we can also see that the gold variety is 8.71 kilos on average, which is quite close to the other two. So we can uh, already start um, sketching what's going on with the relationship between pumpkin weight and its variety, and the giant variety, as it's in the name, is uh, quite a bit um, heavier. However, is this particular deviation from uh, the overall sample average statistically significant? Is this deviation enough for us to judge that the pumpkin variety does indeed matter for its weight? Well, for that, we have to calculate the variability between our groups, and that is easy to do. We can just sum the squared deviations from the varieties uh, averages and the average across the sample and square it. And that generates our between group variability, which is uh, 1491 on average. And then we need to compare it to within group variability as well pumpkins of the same variety have also got different weights and we need to compare how much does the weight vary across varieties as compared to uh, within the variety. For that we can simply calculate the squared deviation of individual weights from their respective uh, variety averages. And we generate the result here, and we can see that these two numbers between group variability and within group variability do sum up to the total variability. And this is the essence of the second method that I'm going to show now, which does not involve calculating uh, averages and tracking them across the sample. We can simply populate this table above our calculations before, and calculate average ifs just once. So we refer to the variety of the pumpkin. We refer to which variety we do care about in this particular case, and refer to the column of pumpkin weights, and drag it across all four varieties. Here we can see the differences even uh, more illustratively. And for the total um, average, we can just calculate the sample average without any conditions. And now we can simply use the count if function to keep track of how many pumpkins of each variety we have got in our sample. So we refer to the variety column, we lock it, we refer to the particular variety we care about in this case, drag it across, and then we can count the weights for the sample total. We can see that the observations across four varieties do sum up to 200, which is good news. That means that we haven't missed anything. And now we can use the second method to retrieve our between and within group variability. So for the total variability, we can just sum the squared deviations of weights from the overall average, which we record here. For the between group variability, we can use the contents of the table above and just that. So we can calculate the deviations of group specific averages from the total average, square it, multiply it by the counts of observations in each group, and get exactly the same result as in the previous case. And then for within group variability, we can use the property that they do add up to the total. So we can just subtract the between group variability from the total and get exactly the same result. Now, for significance testing, we need to use the F test with between group variability adjusted by the degrees of freedom in the numerator and within group variability adjusted by the residual degrees of freedom in the denominator. Here we have got four groups, four varieties, and we have got 200 observations. And we have got, as referred to previously, 200 observations. Degrees of freedom of the model of um, basically the explanatory power we seek to investigate is the number of groups minus one. Minus one is due to the fact that every single pumpkin can freely move from the group it belongs to currently to three other groups. 
and what we can also use to uh, intuitively justify this degree of freedom reduction is that if we had just one group, we would not be able to determine whether it matters for pumpkin size or not. We wouldn't have enough information. So use either of those two intuitive reasonings to justify that the degrees of freedom of the model are reduced by one as compared to the number of groups you've got. The residual degrees of freedom is number of observations minus the number of groups. And we've got 196 that we'll use to scale our denominator, our within group variability that comes there. So for the F statistic that will be used for the Levine's F test, we need to uh, translate this equation into the language of Excel. So basically, we refer to the between group variability, dividing it by the model degrees of freedom. And in the denominator, we have got within group variability divided by the residual degrees of freedom. That gives us an F statistic of 13.7 on average, and we can evaluate its statistical significance, the explanatory power of uh, pumpkin varieties in terms of pumpkin weights by using the right-tailed F distribution, plugging in the F statistic, the degrees of freedom of the model, and the residual degrees of freedom, like that. And that gives us a p-value that's very close to zero. That would mean that the uh, explanatory power of uh, pumpkin variety in explaining pumpkin weights is statistically significant at 1%, as this p-value is below 1%, meaning that we have to reject the null hypothesis that pumpkin variety doesn't matter for pumpkin weight and accept the alternative hypothesis that pumpkin variety does matter for pumpkin weight. We can also say that uh, giant variety pumpkins are the heaviest of them all, as the deviations from the overall sample mean are proven to be statistically significant using the Levine's F-test. And this is how you evaluate the differences between multiple means. Obviously, if we had just two varieties, we could have used something like a T-test or a Z-test, and we have uh, would have chosen an appropriate um, type of a Z-test or a T-test in this regard. But for multiple means, uh, ANOVA is a very good procedure to condense all of the testing into one uh, value and into one hypothesis. So do use it if you've got a categorical variable and you want to evaluate the heterogeneity or homogeneity of your data with regards to this categorical variable and groups based on it. Next, for the uh, fertilizer, we can use exactly the same two approaches. First of all, using the direct method, applying the average if function, now referring to the column where the fertilizer is recorded. Now, uh, we also refer to the fertilizer used to grow this particular pumpkin, and we refer to the column of pumpkin weights, just as previously. And now for the uh, first method here, for the uh, second categorical variable, the fertilizer, we can use the same approach to evaluate the total variability, as obviously our sample does not change whatsoever. For between group variability, we simply change the column that we refer to to calculate group averages, because now we're calculating the group averages based on fertilizer and not variety. And now for the within group variability, we can use exactly the same logic, but we calculate the deviations of weights, not from variety specific averages, but fertilizer specific averages. And for the second method, we can construct a table very similarly. We can copy these across and change references to be fertilizer specific. Drag it down for all three fertilizers. We can see that we have got three groups and they do indeed sum to 200, which means we haven't missed anything. And we proceed as follows. So for the total variability, we calculate the sum of deviations of individual weights from the overall average. For between group variability, we calculate the sum of average across groups minus the total average squared times the observation counts in every single group. And for the within group, again, we use the property that they do sum up to the total, so we simply subtract. 
Now here we've got three groups, everything else is exactly the same. So we can just copy the uh, formulas across here and perform the significance testing for the fertilizer in one go. We see that the uh, difference is that the degrees of freedom of the model is just two because we've got three groups here, nitrogen, potassium and phosphate, and we have got a much smaller F statistic given that the between group variability with regards to the fertilizer is much lower than that uh, with regards to the variety. So here we have got an insignificant result as we have plugged the F statistic into the F distribution, just like in the previous case, we obtained a p-value that is greater than 10%. So at any conventional confidence threshold, this result is statistically insignificant. So although the average weights do differ uh, across fertilizers, those differences are not large enough to deem statistical significance. We cannot conclude that those have not um, have arisen from random chance alone. And that means that uh, the fertilizer on its own does not affect the weight of pumpkins in our sample. That means we have to stick with the null hypothesis that fertilizer used does not affect the weights of pumpkins. However, um, we have used uh, two uh, one-way uh, analysis of variances. Uh, we used the ANOVA twice, basically. We used two Levin's tests but what if we want to evaluate how the variety and the fertilizer um, affect the pumpkin weight jointly? Are there any interaction effects? Maybe some fertilizers work better on some pumpkin varieties. Well, for that, we need to do a two-way analysis of variance. It's slightly more complicated, but not by much, and that is what we're going to investigate in the next video. As for now, please leave a like under this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider support on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.